Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing something of your story. Thanks, Andrew. Good to see you. Uh, why don't you start by telling us where you are and what you're up to at the moment? Yeah, no problem. Um, I'm a minister in training. I'm in my final months of training now. And um, I'm in a sole pastor at, at Braybourne Baptist Church, which is uh, near Ashford. Fantastic. You were in Canterbury, weren't you, with, with us at CBC and moving yes, to a does. village. What's that been like? Um, very different. When you're used to a, a larger town and city, um, it is very, very quiet where we are. Very quiet. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> So what's your association with CBC? I mentioned that you used to be part of the church. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that and, and our involvement in your, your moving to, to Braybourne and into ministry? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it was back in 2015 when myself and my wife Julie started coming to CBC and soon got very involved in the church life there and became members and uh, although at that time I was quite happily in the world of policing, uh, there was just one particular Sunday when I was listening to you preach, um, where I suddenly heard this voice in my head saying, I want you to do that. And I remember saying, what do you mean you want me to do what? Uh, I want you to train for Baptist ministry. And uh, their long, long period, as you know, of intense argument with myself, trying to persuade God that he's clearly got it wrong. Um, but you and the church family helped me to discern that calling and, um, and ultimately prove that God was right. And so um, I think it was in 2018 you, you sent me on my way and uh, my journey into ministry properly began. Fantastic. To be honest, I'm still falling over myself that someone listened to my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> I guess technically you weren't listening. You, you were listening well, I was up until that point. <laughs> it's fair to say I don't remember what you said after that. <laughs> well, I'm sure you join in many others. Um, <laughs> Paul, you were telling me, you know, off camera that that moving out of policing was was difficult for you. Um, so maybe say a little bit more, or tell us a little bit more about that. There'll be some people who perhaps feel a calling, but but are reluctant to stop doing what they're doing um, despite the call from God that they they receive and, and I'm also interested um, Paul to, to hear a little bit about whether that was the only moment that you sensed the call or whether there was a journey of discerning a call into ministry. Yeah I mean I think there have been a number of times in my Christian walk with that you know I, I mean I came to faith when I was 15 when I think God might have been speaking to me but the world of policing seemed very attractive and so I went into the police in the early in the sort of mid 80s uh, and that's where I stayed um, I was always very involved in church life um, but I think when this call came I mean it was such a sort of shock because there's me I've been in policing you know over 30 years and I thought that's where I would stay yeah. and I'm thinking remember thinking well how can this possibly be right mm. why now why me what have I got to offer all the sort of questions that I suspect many people ask and if I'm honest I think I was frightened about it yeah you know how you know because what does this look like and and as i've briefly said there was a long period of arguing and discussing and testing with god and him basically breaking down every barrier until the end of the day i just had to say well lord i, I still don't understand why you're asking me to do this but if it's what you want will you just show me how that happens yeah. um and I think that's when that on that process carries on going on, doesn't it? In discussions with yourself, yeah. going to Spurgeon's College Open Day, talking to other people, testing that sense of calling, pushing on doors and seeing if they were open. And, and ultimately, it, it required just a huge step of faith, you know, to, to turn your back on everything that I knew, the security of, uh, you know, a well-paid job, to step into something that, don't get me wrong, I knew my faith, but I knew nothing about ministry yeah. at all. And, um, but, you know, just trusting God that he would make that clear. Very good. 
So what 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 would do you, what piece of advice would you give someone who's seeking to discern a call from God based on your own experience? Well, I think <laughs> whether this is the right advice to begin with, I would say to say no uh, to start <laughs> with. Um, and it, because I think I think back to the document that the BU put out, it might even be SIBA. You know, if this is of God, it becomes irresistible. And so for me, there was no sense of rushing into it. It was, no, I, I really, I mean, yes, I did argue with God, but God, you know, made it more and more clear that this is what he wanted me to do. And I think it is that it's about listening. Obviously, you can come out with all prayer and things like that, but you've got to test it, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, you as a church helped me with that, just with the preaching side of things, mm. you know, linking me in with other churches so I could get some practice and see if this did fit, yeah. um, you know, if there was something to build on. But I would just say, don't just rush at it. Take that time to yeah. really make sure that what you're hearing is is actually what you're meant to hear. Really helpful. And finally, um, Paul, just thinking about natural gifts and abilities have you have you been able to transfer and use natural gifts and abilities i mean we say natural i mean they, they come from god of course um but have you been able to transfer those natural gifts into into ministry yeah i mean most definitely i mean policing had trained me as a specialist interviewer as a, someone who was able to communicate with people well you you cannot be in pastoral ministry if you can't communicate with people mm -hmm. um you know policing had trained me in respect of some aspects of public speaking again that obviously has helped when you first stand yourself you know find yourself stood in front of a church they're sat there very expectant and um you know and and that does help and then i think also one of the big areas and it was one of the ones where i felt when i said to god look what can a police officer bring to this well i've realized in pastoral ministry ministry so much so many of these life experiences that i had in policing that have been able to translate into pastoral care yeah um you know and and, and that's been quite remarkable to see how that's worked out mm. that's fantastic paul thank you so much for your time Pray Thank you, Andrew. On you and your continued ministry at Braybourne and beyond. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. God bless. Thank you.